<laughs> Everyone was calling her Herbie. <laughs> I know. Whenever you're ready. I'm Paula Cole, and this is Mark Goldenberg on guitar, and Tony Mason on the drums, and we're here with you on Wolfgang's Vault. We're going to do a few songs. This one is called Music and Me. inside my head the need for love the insecurity cutting me down like a 14 year old girl the father figure criticized Cause I know This is a love song, and it's a song of appreciation. 
definitely one to listen to with somebody that you feel um, inclined to cuddle up to and give them a squeeze. <laughs> um, this song is called Carmen.
Thanks. Here's an old ditty you might know. guitar and Tony Mason on the drums. Thank you. Hello, I'm Angie with Wolfgang's Ball, and I'm here with Paula Cole, who just did a beautiful three-song session with us. 
Um, so uh, just get started. You're touring on a new record, Ithaca, and it's been a few years since your last album, and this is sort of a change in direction for you. The style is a little different. How's the response been so far? It's been wonderful. Thanks, Angie. Um, Ithaca kind of is a smattering of a lot of what I do, uh, but it really harkens back to my older kind of rocks, rock roots, mm -hmm. whereas the last album, Courage, was a little more jazz-inflected. Ithaca is a return to kind of who I am, basically. What are some of like the themes and kind of ideas behind Ithaca? Oh, I called it Ithaca because it really did feel like I had endured this Odyssean journey in my life of taking a long eight-year hiatus from the music business, enduring uh, my daughter's asthma and having to take care of her and, you know, divorce, personal things that uh, were really hard. So I, I kind of relate to that metaphor of going out into the world and feeling beat up and trying hard to come home to my home, which is Rockport, Massachusetts, uh, like you know Odysseus did in coming back home after his 10-year effort to come back to Ithaca. I love the word, too, Ithaca. So I, I don't know. That, that feels like where I was in my life, and the songs are written out of that time. What a great theme for an album. I mean, <laughs> all that self-discovery and, you know, it's yeah. great, trying to do roots. I sound, have to sound so lofty and literate, but I, I don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you had taken, your daughter was born in 2001, and then yes. you took some time off until um, Courage was released in 2007. During that time, certainly the music industry went through a lot of changes. What was it like getting back into things in that, in that time? I'm, I still feel like I'm trying to figure it out, because the music business Everyone is. <laughs> is changing and atrophying right before our eyes. Or I shouldn't say, it's, it's mutating into something else. Music will endure because it must, because it's this primal need for humans, right? I mean, we have to. We have to be around our collective campfire and bond and heal and feel our feelings through music. We need to do that. So one way or another, we will do it. And um, even if you know a physical product is going to be an obsolescent art form, I will still perform live, because that's what I must do. I must do it from my heart. So yes, I, I straddle this like pre-internet and post-internet. I had a career kind of pre-internet boom, and now I'm out here again. And it's um, it feels more niche. It feels um, humbler, you know, for me. Um, that's okay though. I, I feel like the fans are there for all of the songs, not just the hits. Or they know it's more than just like Dawson's Creek and Where Have All the Cow Was Gone, but. So, you know, I'm just kind of being me and plugging through and being very zen about it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. You like to tour because that's how, you know, it's a, a sustainable way of... <laughs> Not always, being, but yes. <laughs> you, you make do with that. Yeah, yeah, you know. What are some of the challenges that you find of being on the road and the ways you can cope? I have this, like, 50-pound suitcase. I literally have to take my boots out to make it 50 pounds at the airport. And I'm just so bloody tired <laughs> of guarding that thing around. It's like a body, you sure. know. So, I, and I... I am a nester. I love my home. Um, so it's funny to me that it, it's so extreme. I, I go home and I really don't go out. I'm, I'm, I nest. And I'm a mom and I do drop off and I chaperone field trips. And then yeah. I, I come out here and I'm with my fellas and we are troubadours and, you know, going through America in the van, the, you, you know, or the bus yeah. or the plane or whatever it is. But it's two good lives to balance, though, you know? Yeah, your, your very life. different. And how does the presence of your, of your daughter inform your music now? I'm sure she has a role in sort of your creation. <laughs> Mommy, stop singing! <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. You leave it again? <laughs> Let me please find a private moment so I can go sing, you know? It's, it's, it's much more compartmentalized, whereas before yeah. in my 20s, like, it was this long dream space. Oh, I could stay up till 4 a.m. In fact, like, midnight to 4 a.m. was totally my most plugged-in inspired times well that those days are gone and now it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> compartmentalized and that's fine I am a more efficient person I'm sharper because I have to do more in a shorter amount of space I feel like I'm more uh, finely tuned uh, so uh, yeah I, I don't know did I answer that question yeah absolutely okay <laughs> um, I, just, I understand that you know you're a very um, autobiographical writer what are some of the ways that you find catharsis through music I mean, maybe that's a general question, but... Uh, no, it's all right. I'll try to flow with it. <laughs> I have been asked to write for other people, 
whether they use the songs is another matter. Like Don was asked me to write something for Solomon Burke, who just recently passed mm -hmm. away. Um, I've and I've had my songs covered by people, and it's, that is wonderful to know that even though I wrote them from this very personal, private space, that it it, it still uh, works it's for universal. other people. Yeah, yeah, it's personal, universal. For me, um, I'm here. This overly sensitive person who feels uh, inept in, in this fast moving world. Sometimes I struggle to find my emotions. I, I struggle in the world like we all do. Uh, and songs kind of help me find myself. They fi help me find my center, my feelings. So the songs uh, literally sometimes inform my life instead of my life informing the songs. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I, I'll be in this kind of place where I'm dialoguing with the subconscious writing and something comes out on the page and I realize, oh my goodness, I need to get out of this marriage or what have you. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's your poetry. Yeah, yeah. Um, you had such a, a vibrant career in the 90s, you know, with Peter Gabriel and Lilith Fair and, you know, a lot of the music you wrote was, uh, it went over in a really big way. What are some of the, like, the challenges of having that past and some of the, um, you know, how has that been a blessing and a curse, basically? With uh, where you are now. Yeah. Um, I suppose the curse is overcoming, um, you know, the small stigmatized comp compartmentalization that occurs in people, in their minds. Like, no, I'm not just Dawson's Creek, although I'm grateful for that. Um, and I'm not just, where have all the cowboys gone? That's what happens when you have hits. Yeah. They, they, uh, become moments in people's minds. There's a lot more, and um, I think my, my fans know that, the ones that come out to the shows. and So that, that's my challenge. It, it's very hard um, to have a second career, I'm mm -hmm. finding. When you're, you're just starting out, everyone is excited to kind of spread the news about a debut artist, but having a second career, and I, and I really am. I, I mean, I took an eight-year hiatus from the music business um, to open people's hearts and minds. Now, um, I'm 42, and it, it, it's there are very few role models for me, especially as women in the music business. So I can't get discouraged by that, and I do, I do. I get depressed, damn it, and I sometimes like it's hard. think about <laughs> hanging it up, you, you know. Yeah. But but I can't because I, I have this thing that I must do, and it makes me happy, and it. So I just have to keep on with it and, and be the minority and, and be enduring it. But well, your music keeps you know, evolving and transcending too, which obviously your fans, you know, that's, you know, people feel that when they discover your music again, this juncture in your, in your life. I went on and on about the, the, the glass half empty, like the, the cons, but the pros are, <laughs> the pros, there are a multitude of pros and wonderful things that occurred out of, like, even just my memories, like, I get to grow old with my memories that I had. I had, I had such an amazing trip and ride in the 90s. Um, I'm, I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for seeing the world. I'm grateful... Um, God for the opportunities it gave me. Even you know, even Dawson's Creek, like it it financed me while I was taking care of my asthmatic daughter, and I couldn't work. So there's loads and loads of blessings. So few people are able to do what I do and make a living. And oh my God, I'm so grateful for that. I just what it comes down to though is like I share this joy with my fellas on the stage every night, and I mean I mean it because I love music so passionately. So I'm there for that. You can see when you're performing, you know, yeah. but it really fills Thanks. every part of you, so. Thanks. And finally, um, what are your plans for the rest of the year, besides kind of touring on Ithaca? It is so, I'm so much touring. I mean, November is just touring, and uh, there's Thanksgiving in there. Yeah, <laughs> be here before you know it. Yeah. Oh, uh, gosh, I'm, I think I'm just going to tour, and then I'm going to land home, like some scrambled eggs <laughs> with my suitcases. Nest. <laughs> and nest. Okay, yeah. I'm going to sew curtains. That's what I'm going to do. I bought a sewing machine. I haven't sewed since I was 17 when I took home ec in high school. And I'm kind of psyched to explore that again. It's not that dorky, but I, I yeah. No Sounds great. Yeah, it Especially does. winter in the Northeast. <laughs> you know I have to cover so. up my drafty windows. Yeah. 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 <laughs>
Uh, well, it was such a pleasure talking to you, and thank you so much for coming in for the session. And Thanks for supporting yeah. me. Yeah, It was thank wonderful. You. So, good luck on the rest of the tour. Thank you. I think that'll do thank it. Thank you, everybody.